All right, guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna be doing a whole bunch of work on this Mercury Grand Marquis behind me. Stay tuned. So today, we're supposed to be doing an entire suspension kit, as well as the front and rear brake pads on my brother's old car. I'm going to get these parts out of here. Looks like we got upper ball joints. We should have sway bar links, lower ball joints inner and outer tie rod ends and the sleeves and I believe there's even an idler arm and a pitman arm in here. So I'm going to get all this out. I'm going to uh, get the left front jacked up and we're going to go ahead and get started on this side here. Alright, so we got the whole driver's side jacked up and we've got both of the wheels off. So the next thing I'm going to do is start working on getting this knuckle removed, this piece right here. So the brake's gonna have to come off. We are just doing the pads today. It'd be best to replace these rotors, but we're probably just gonna do the pads on them because that's what I was provided. And they're not really ground into too bad. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting this taken apart. Okay, so got the brake caliper off and the pads out. Went on ahead and just set it there on the lower control arm for now because there's not really a strut or anything to hang it on and it's kind of hooked in behind the frame there so I don't think it's going to fall. And uh, definitely good that we were replacing these because these were pretty worn down indeed. Luckily the rotor's not all screwed up on the back side. These things are almost certainly warped a bit, but it's not going to tear up the new pads. Um, so I got the uh, nut for the sway bar link removed, and I also took out the tie rod end from here, and this thing still... I mean, I'm pushing pretty hard with one hand, and it doesn't even want to turn. And I know new ball joints are kind of stiff, and older ball joints, you know, you can usually turn the knuckle a little easier. But I feel like these are worn out in a different way, almost. Like, it's like they have no lubrication whatsoever. It's extremely hard to turn this knuckle even with the tie rod off. It's not like it's locked in place because of that, so... It's definitely good that we're going ahead and replacing these today. So the next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is tap out the sway bar link. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove the bolt for the upper ball joint. So far I've got the lug nuts off, the one nut and cotter pin for the tie rod end. I've got the two bolts that holds the brake caliper to the back side of the bracket here on the slide pins and then we've got our one nut there that held the sway bar link in place so that's just a catch up to where I'm at right now I'm gonna go ahead and take the next couple steps so one little tip this part's not the easiest to get out right and so you want to kind of tap it in the middle of the bolt and so I went ahead and I put the nut on there to avoid damaging the threads because my punch is coming down at an angle. And I know we're replacing it, but I don't want to damage stuff as I'm taking it off and make it more difficult for myself. But one little cool little tip is you can put the nut on there and that's obviously going to protect the threads. And then you can leave it loose just a little bit like that. And then with my snap-on punch, I'm able to go right into that hole, and the nut is going to keep me perfectly aligned against the center of the stud there. And I was able to actually tap it out like that. I probably won't be able to show it because I can't do it with one hand. Well, let's give it a shot, actually. Got this pry bar 
rested on the side of my arm and I'm holding the phone with that same arm and we'll give it a little tap there you go you can see it there we go it's going through but yeah just a little tip for you guys out there if you have a tool kind of like that one or something similar then you can use it to get stuff like this out whenever you need by doing that little trick right there all right so we got the upper ball joint removed you can see those two studs we basically just had to take off these two 21 millimeter nuts and then the alignment nut slash washers whatever you want to call those and I got them in the same order they came off. The one closest to us is the one that goes closest to us on here. We got the sway bar link out of there. And whenever it came out of the knuckle, it came up quite a bit. So we should have no problem getting to the uh, torque steel on the inside of there. So that that nut will come off. And then I've already got the cotter pin out of the lower nut here for the lower ball joint. And once we get that off, I can remove the entire steering knuckle and begin to start pressing out the ball joint. So we've already got the majority of the parts we're replacing removed completely from the vehicle with the exception of the sway bar link and the ball joint here. So we're going to go ahead and do those next. Okay, so now I got the whole steering knuckle removed and I got the ball joint out and luckily I was able to just beat it out with a hammer so I only have to do half of the pressing now. So my caliper did fall out while I was beating but I think it'll be alright. And then I just need to get this out next and then I'll officially have everything that I'm replacing removed on the driver front corner. So we do have the sway bar link out now and I also have the inner and outer tie rod assembly removed and I'm going to just put the new one together and make it roughly that same length and just put it back on there like that. Then it'll be on to the new sway bar link and ball joint. Okay, so I went ahead and I just assembled my inner and outer tie rod assembly and I made it about the same length as the old ones and then I went ahead and just tightened down the clamps on the sleeve and installed it on the inner area there. Got both of my grease fittings in. You can see that one and that one. Probably shoot a couple pumps of grease in each one. I know they come pre-greased, but... Um, I'm going to go ahead and shoot a couple pumps anyway. Then we've got the sway bar link, which unfortunately, yeah, it does not, it's a sealed unit, but that's totally fine. The other side is broken. We haven't even got there yet, so this is definitely going to help out for sure. So we're pretty much just going in reverse order at this point. We're going to go ahead and press in the new ball joint now. Right, so we're getting that new ball joint pressed in now. Okay, now the ball joint is in and the boot is pushed on. I hate the ones where the boots don't come already attached and you have to press it in and then put the boot on because this bottom part right here is extremely stiff and doesn't usually want to come over. So what I do is I take something like this from the ball joint uh, master adapter kit and I just kind of tap down on it like it's some kind of a seal and it'll usually go in place that way. So now we've got uh, technically our inner and outer tie rods installed, our sway bar link installed, and our ball joint is pressed in so we can now go ahead and put the knuckle back on and start connecting some of these other parts. Alright so now we got our knuckle back in place, our ball joint nut put back on and the cotter pin put in. 
and I went ahead and just put in by hand the upper ball joint as well we got our grease fitting inside of there so I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those nuts up on top and then I'm gonna reattach the knuckle to the sway bar link and the upper ball joint all right so we finally got upper ball joint connected with the bolt unfortunately the bolt that came with this particular kit did not work because it was not square shaped and therefore it did not fit inside this area so I did have to use the old one and I got the new sway bar link installed and for those of you who are not watching for entertainment and you're actually doing some of these jobs at home in order to get the sway bar link and the upper ball joint back into the knuckle you're going to have to use your jack and get about as far out close to the ball joint as you possibly can and you're going to have to jack it way way up in order to get those two to connect i mean i had the the rotor basically way up here almost before they would finally connect. I finally got it in there, got it all tightened back up and lowered down. So now we're pretty much just at the point where it's like we're doing a brake job. I do have to reconnect the tie rod over there to the knuckle, but pretty much just doing a brake job at this point. We gotta throw the pads on there, clean up the slide pins, lube them up, push the pistons back into the caliper and put it all back together. And then I'm debating if I want to flip the car around so I can still be working in the street for the other side, having a flat level ground to work on, or if I want to come over here where I'm a little more in the gravel and grass, but I don't have to deal with any cars that are driving by because there's been more cars coming by than I expected. I do still have to come back there and do the rear brake pads as well before I put this all back together but we're definitely getting closer and closer to done with the driver's side here okay now we got our new brake pads put in we got our slide pins greased top and bottom we got them pistons pushed back in so now we can just go ahead and put the caliper on put the bolts back in and then the uh, tie rod needs to be connected and I don't think I mentioned this earlier, but I took the knuckle off by disconnecting this electrical connector right here. I think it's supposed to clip in somewhere up here behind this. So if you can't get it out of the knuckle side, which you probably won't be able to without damaging it, because uh, they always get stuck, you can take it out up there. So I got to connect that, connect the tie rod, put the caliper and the wheel back on. And then I'm going to move over to the rear brakes. Alright, so we pretty much got the rear brakes taken apart. You just come on the back side of the caliper and there's going to be two 10 millimeter bolts. You just remove those two bolts and you can slide the caliper off. This is the outer pad and these little clips on the outside of it enable it to slide over these ears and lock in place. So if you just use a screwdriver, a flathead here and here, you can kind of pry the pad out a little bit and then it should slide right out. The inner pad clips in with this little hook deal here and it goes right into the hole in the piston. And this piston was out far enough where I actually had to push it in a little with a C-clamp before I could remove it. And you want to pull these out of the rubber boots here go ahead and put some grease on them slide them back in and put your new pads on all right so we got our pads in once you're done it should look something like this you got your two 10 millimeter bolts in the back everything should be good to go so i'm gonna go ahead and throw this wheel back on and i'm gonna move or actually i'm gonna torque the wheels of course and then i'm gonna move to the other side all right so here we are several hours later i decided not to film the passenger side because it's pretty much the same procedure but down here let me see if i can get you on there right there those two studs are where the idler arm bolts up to the frame 
and then that small stud down there is where the other end of it comes out so you can try to get at these bolts from under the car or from under the hood i ended up taking my impact and a long extension and a eight mil or 18 millimeter and got them off that way we got our old one right here the uh, left side here is where it bolts to the frame and then this side just kind of slides on over that shaft there and then here's kind of another view of it from this side and so that's the only thing that's going to be different on the passenger side you can pretty much see that i got all my new parts installed over here on the passenger side uh you can kind of see that ball joint but yeah we got our new brakes in there too everything we did on the other side we did over here as well I still haven't got started on the rear brakes yet. I took a little break, went inside, ate some dinner and whatnot. And so that's pretty much where we're at here. We are almost finished up with the entire job. Just got to throw this new idler arm on and do the brakes and we'll be all finished up. All right, so you can kind of see down in there. But I got that new idler arm on finally it took a while because the sleeve that is in here you can kind of see the metal sleeve sticking out the bottom the old one was stuck on the stud so I had to torch it up and get it real hot to get it off of there but we finally got all this stuff replaced on both sides finally so I can put the wheel back on and go ahead and start on the rear brakes on the passenger side and we'll be all finished up. Alright, we finally got the new rear brake pads installed. And I'm going to put this wheel back on, take it for a little test drive and we are done. Finally. Woo! All right, and that's the end of our front end replacement and all four brakes replacement on the 99 Mercury Grand Marquis. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.